Welcome to The Prince Eats. Check out this video for beef tips and red wine gravy. Ingredients are in the description. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. This one is quick and easy and a dinner time favorite. After a few tips and easy steps, you'll have this on the dinner table in no time. The first thing I'll do is talk about some of the ingredients I'll use for this recipe. In many beef recipes, onions have a huge role to play. However, in this recipe, the use of onion is very light. I use a shallot for this recipe because it's a much milder version of a traditional onion and when cooked, its presence isn't as prominent as let's say a sweet onion might be. So for this recipe, stick with one shallot per every three pounds of beef. But of course, if you desire to use sweet onion, that also will work well for this recipe. Whichever onions you decide to use, be certain to dice them into small pieces. Doing so certainly will shorten the cook time. This recipe also incorporates chives, which is great for garnishing. Now to the beef. This recipe calls for the sirloin cut of beef. But before I get started, be sure that you're working with a knife that's sharp. A sharp knife overall reduces rubbing, slipping, and accidental injury. Here I have a three pound sirloin and I'm cutting it in half so that it's easier to manage. The sirloin is good for this recipe because it doesn't require a lot of low and slow in order for it to tenderize. When cutting your sirloin into cubes, the objective here is very simple. You want to cut them into bite-sized pieces. My rule of thumb is on a dinner plate, you should only need to cut into the beef one time in order to make it bite-sized. A piece this size cut in half is perfect for this recipe. And smaller pieces also reduces cook time. And as much as possible and without getting too much into the beef, you need to trim excess fat from the beef. You can put any of the scraps to use in a beef stock, but the beef that you'll be using for the recipe, place them in a clean plate and off to the side. When you're ready to cook your beef, grab your skillet and put it over medium high heat. The kind of pan you use will determine your heat setting, and because I'm using a cast iron skillet, medium high heat is perfect for this situation. For searing meats, use an oil with a high smoke point. And while that's heating up, we can talk about the beef seasoning for a moment. Here I just use traditional beef seasonings, which includes paprika, kosher salt, black pepper, cumin, oregano, and of course, chili powder. Right as your pan begins to smoke, you can go ahead and carefully place your beef into the pan. And because these are smaller pieces, you'll need to give some space in between each piece of beef. You'll need space to flip them over one at a time. In order to get a good sear on the steak, allow them to sit for approximately two to three minutes. The cook time will vary depending on the size of the beef cube. Under all circumstances, try not to overcook the beef. You can flip the beef over and once it gets a sear similar to this, You'll only need to sear it on the other side for approximately 30 seconds and then you can remove it from the pan. Depending on the amount of bits and pieces in your pan, you might need to wipe it out for the next step. While still on medium high heat, go ahead and drizzle more cooking oil and add a tablespoon of butter. You might need to tilt your pan in order to spread the butter and oil. Carefully dump in your shiitake mushrooms and spread them out evenly so that they maintain even contact with the bottom of the pan. You'll want to get a good color on your mushrooms, so once you place them into the pan and allow them to touch the bottom of the pan evenly, just let them cook for approximately two to three minutes. Flip them over and allow them to cook on the opposite side for approximately one to two minutes. Add the shallots and allow them to cook for approximately three to five minutes or until they become tender. And now that the mushrooms are fully cooked, we can go ahead and add some salt. And the thing about the salt and mushrooms you don't want to add the salt too soon because if you do, it won't get that brown color. Reason being is salt draws out moisture, and as you know, moisture is the enemy of searing and browning. Reduce the heat to medium and carefully pour in some red wine. Here I have Cabernet Sauvignon. That will quickly come to a simmer and as it does, you can pour in your beef stock. Start with a half a cup to one cup of beef stock and go from there later as you see fit. As it simmers, add one to two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I recommend starting light and adding more later after a taste test. Allow this to simmer for approximately 5 minutes or until the strong smell of alcohol dissipates. As the sauce thickens, you can reintroduce the beef back into the pan. Reduce the heat to low and add a couple tablespoons of butter. As the butter begins to melt, you can turn the heat off and allow the butter to melt with the residual heat from the pan. You may need to stir the butter in the pan so that it melts sooner rather than later. Stir or shake the pan to ensure that all the beef is covered in the sauce. Give the sauce a taste test and add salt as needed. And just like that you're done. And all that's left to do is garnish with parsley or chives. A classic pairing with this dish is rice or mashed potatoes. 
What I love about this dish is it's hearty, full flavor, and high value because it reheats well as a leftover. Dinner is served. For more simple and easy meals just like this one, visit theprinceeats.com and The Prince Eats on all social media platforms.